Hello, this is Rory Andrews for Swarmio Esports. Mark Cuban's not investing in esports teams. The reason? Child labor laws. Q bumper! Okay, so that was a little bit of an exaggeration. The people who play esports are regularly 18 years old or older, so child labor laws don't really apply. But Mark Cuban, on paper, looks like the perfect person to invest in an esports team. For one thing, he owns the Dallas Mavericks, and the NBA has made increased commitments into esports. And a second thing is, he owns a media company. He's also an investor, uh, an entrepreneur. He can be seen on Shark Tank regularly, where he invests in multiple companies. So you wonder why he wouldn't invest in esports. Right now, let's look at the NBA and esports. Let's see the teams that have invested. Team Liquid is owned by the Washington Wizards and the Golden State Warriors. Uh, the Memphis Gri Grizzlies own the Immortals. The Sacramento Kings are the owner and launched NRG. And the Miami Heat has a marketing, uh, a marketing deal with the Misfits. And the 76ers have controlling interest in Team Dignitas. So what's holding Mark Cuban back? Well, he did an interview recently with a gaming podcast where he said, as long as the eSport is one where they have to change everything, that means that players have to practice continuously to stay up. Because it really is a sport, the hand-eye coordination, the thinking process, it's incredible the skill you have to have and the endurance you have to have to play. But on the human side, and the reason I don't want to get involved is, I can't see taking an 18, 19, 20-year-old kid, man or woman, and playing all those hours and there not being consequences. So the question here is, is the eSports lifestyle too demanding for players? Let's jump in. Now on the surface, a career in eSports sounds like a dream job. You wake up every day and you play video games and you get paid. Some players get paid up to a six-figure salary. Ten years ago, that would be unheard of, making that much money playing video games. But today, it's in the news almost on a daily basis. What we don't hear is the actual commitment it takes to stay on top of your game. Teams regularly live in gaming households. This is where a five-man team in League of Legends or Dota 2 or CSGO will live together with their coach and their chef, play together every day for six hours to eight hours, and once they're done, they go to their individual computers and they Twitch stream playing alone. This can be up to 14 hours a day of gaming. This is what you have to do. This is competitive gaming, and it's not just competing against teams. It's competing against every single other player that wants to be the top pro gamer of all time. What this means is the spots are incredibly valuable and incredibly sought after. Let's look at the gaming houses for one thing. You have your coach in there, you have your chef in there, a lot of teams have chefs. You have your five-man team and you have eight hours of practice a day. This is the equivalent of an NBA player living in the stadium. This doesn't happen, there are regulations here. But eSports is a non-regulated thing. So having people live in a house, it actually looks like quite the boon, right? You get a place to live, that's great. But unfortunately, it forces you to practice for up to 14 hours a day. And let's talk about personal brand. It's a regular part of an eSports player's contract to cultivate a personal brand. This means they have to be on Facebook, this means they have to be on Twitter, they have to have Twitch live streams, Instagram accounts, Snap, Snapchat accounts, that not only makes them accessible to people, but makes people accessible to them. And what this equals is trolling. It's a massive psychological burden to be an eSports star, and this is something people don't take into account. This is why more and more teams are actually hiring sports psychologists to be part of their team. These players are regularly 18 years old, and they're not equipped to deal with this kind of social media burden. Also, let's talk about the retirement age. Most eSports players don't make it to 30. This is because players burn out. The tournaments are all around the world, and many times the tournaments happen all in one day or one weekend, which is eight hours of playing on a world competitive stage. This is a lot of stress for somebody. So back to Mark Cuban. Is he saying that player burnout makes it a poor investment? Or is he saying that player burnout is not a morally fantastic thing to invest in? 
I get the feeling that he's talking about the investment. He's saying it's somewhat of a gold rush right now when it comes to esports, and he's just taking his time before he jumps in. He's already invested in a company called Unicorn, which allows people to watch esports and bet on them. So as far as the morality goes, I don't think he's that concerned with that. But as far as the investment in a team and how long the players are going to actually last, he's just not very comfortable with that right now. This has been Rory Andrews for Sormio Esports. Goodbye.